When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. We read that in Genesis chapter 25, verses 27 to 28. This series that we've been looking at over the patriarch family of God gives us some opportunities to explore these sibling rivalries. I mean, there's Jacob and Esau. We'll soon see Leah and Rachel, two sisters, the, the wives to Jacob. And then the, the sons of Jacob, uh, or Israel, the, that become the 12 uh, persons of the 12 tribes of Israel. Many, many of us know what sibling rivalry is like. We, we have struggles with our own siblings, or we are raising children who bicker and compete with each other on a daily basis. Knowing and even recounting our own experiences can help bring these scriptures to life. In this first story of sibling rivalry, we see the romantic couple, Isaac and Rebecca, from last week at odds now with each other because of their boys. They are playing favorites with their, their twin sons, uh, which is a, rep a recipe for conflict in itself. Granted, uh, the boys were already at odds with each other in their mother's womb, but the favoritism of their parents only fuels that rivalry. Ultimately, Rebecca and her son Jacob outsmart Isaac and the son Esau. It is Jacob who through deceit and trickery, ends up with the blessing of Isaac and the covenant promise of God. God's role in the whole thing is not really straightforward. Did God choose Jacob all along? Or when God told Rebekah that the elder shall serve the younger, was God stating a preference or simply recognizing the inevitability. Did Rebecca scheme for Jacob because she thought God had chosen him or simply because she loved him more? None of the answers is clear. We must read for ourselves and come to our own conclusions. But one thing is clear in the story. Neither son is a great hero. Esau is strong and likable, but he is foolish. He chooses to satisfy his bodily hunger rather than hold on to the promise of God through his birthright. And Jacob is conniving and grasping, but he longs for that birthright and blessing of his father Isaac. And in spite of the fa faults on all sides of the family, God works anyway. God sees that Jacob has prevailed in his efforts to gain the birthright, and God chooses to work with him. The family is totally dysfunctional, but God works through each one of them anyway. God moves forward with the covenant with Jacob, but God does not abandon Esau. While Jacob eventually becomes Israel, God also blesses Esau with land and offspring. And as time passes, the two brothers are able to reconcile in their own way and stand together to bury their father. There is hope even in our dysfunctional families for reconciliation. And this is always good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.